everyone. Lord, it's, it's awesome to be here. I'm going to lower that a little bit. It's even sounds loud to me. So, um, just glad to be here with everyone this morning. Does anybody have any announcements to share? I will uh, share a couple with you. And uh, we have some veggies in the back. Um, let's see. I know there's pickles, and I know there's zucchini. And I also know this is not a veggie, but it's a, we have eggs back there. So please, if you want some eggs, please go back there and get some. We have those face masks as well. Yeah, and I did move a box there, but we had a donation of uh, some face masks back there. If you'd like, they're um, kind of disposable ones, but they're, I don't know, we took a couple home. And they work really well to keep in your car. And uh, so those were donated. So there's a box back there, so you can look inside there. And uh, it's just kind of a little small package like that, and it's easy to keep in your car or something like that, or and purse maybe. So when you get halfway to the store and the store ends up on the door and you say, ah, I gotta go back. No, nope, you got, you're all covered there. So, um, so take a look at that as well. And uh, um, so, let's see. I think that's. Does anybody else have announcements? I covered the veggies and the eggs and. Uh, if you look at the back of the bulletin, uh, we have a birthday that's coming up this Saturday. Uh, Anna Saulbaum has a birthday, so a happy birthday to her. And uh, we kind of celebrated a little bit uh, um, with their uh, youth group. And uh, so we had a good time. We had a uh, good number of kids on Wednesday. And, and so it was a great time uh, with the kids. And um, uh, let's see, and I'm not going to do it. We, Ann and I have our anniversary. This is actually today, so happy anniversary. Yay! Happy anniversary. Jackson, yay. I'll take that any day. So it's a, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear friends. Happy anniversary. To you. Thank you very much. 29 years, who would have thought? So, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know. We did, we did uh, something, I don't know if I shared it yesterday, earlier, first service, but I'll talk about it now. We did something kind of different for um, our anniversary. We were, my daughter in law has a birthday this week, actually Monday, I think. And so we went to um, Walmart, or, uh, um, Walgreens, and uh, was going to get a card for her. And so I said, yeah, I need to go get a card, too. And she said, yeah, me too. So we are just kind of thinking anniversary card. So as we got to Walgreens, we were sitting in a car getting ready to get out. And says, well, I was kind of thinking that we'd just pick out a card and we'd just, you know, swap the card. And you could read it, and then you could put it back on the shelf and save the money. I'm like, yes, yes, finally, this is an awesome idea. The ultimate, oh, the the ultimate recycling, you know. So we go in there, and I just, in, in my own defense, I did not go in there and just pick the card off and give it to her. It, I picked the first one up and said, it has in there, you know, by how, oh, you know, I don't say it enough, and I don't do this. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not fitting. I say it all the time, so I put it back. And it picked out a nice one, and then she picked one out. We swapped it, we read it, and I gave her a kiss in Walgreens. I said, happy anniversary. And then we put it back on the shelf. So it was uh, uh, like six and a half bucks for that. <laughs> so, it did. so anyway. Um, <laughs> Next year, same time, same yeah, station. Yeah. You know, we've had anniversaries where we've had nothing to talk about before, so I have something to talk about. So a, and to go with this, you know, I, I, we were just talking on the way to church this morning, we, you know, swapping something that is sermon worthy, just not this Sunday. And uh, when, when we got done, we, we were just cracking it up in the car, driving to Tep this morning. And I was like, you know what, that's what's missing in, in marriages anymore, is we don't laugh anymore, we take everything serious. And so, um, I just thought it was a good time, and, and so I think, uh, I'll kind of get into more later, but, uh, um, you know, this is my time up here to, to talk about Anne. So. <laughs> But anyway, happy anniversary, and, uh, and we did, it, it was good, and happy birthday to Anna, and I don't know, is, is Julie watching? Julie's so watching. we're going to sing happy birthday to Anna. <laughs> happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Anna, happy 
happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anna. So, um, let's see. I think uh, that's it for the uh, until later. You know, when we get into the marriage roast. And, uh, so it's. Uh, um, anybody else have any announcements? Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll go to the call to worship. Father God, what a joy it is, Father. We're in the house of the Lord, and we still laugh and joy, have joy in this family. And, and Father, last week we said, you, you are chosen, you are loved, you are of the family. And so, Father, today, this morning, we got together, and we just, we just laughed together and just enjoyed each other's company and just had a, had just had a time where, where we just truly were filled with the joy of laughter. And, Father, we know that you appreciate that time in your family. And so today we're going to come together and hear through the scriptures and the different things that we're going to learn today. We're going to hear about something more deep and, and, and serious in the church. But, Father, there's still room for laughter. And so, Father, today, as your people, as a dwelling place of the Lord, Father, we come to you and we ask for your wisdom and knowledge to fall upon us. May the love of Jesus Christ just, just ooze from who we are so others can truly be able to experience that. Father, we just thank you today. And Father, we just pray that you will open up our minds and our hearts so that we can truly receive the word of God for our, for our week, for this day, for whatever need we may have. May the, may the very presence of God um, come into us so that in that presence we can truly feel a healing power from within. So, Father, today we thank you and praise you as we come together and sing praises to your name and, and be nurtured and lifted and, and taught through the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all join together in the call to worship. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Members of God's family. And brothers and sisters to one another. There are no outsiders here among us. No one has special standing or bragging rights. For we have been brought together by the redeeming love of Jesus. Let's join, join together, together in worship. worship. Our first hymn is 641, which is uh, Fill Me Up, Lord. And we will sing through that twice. <laughs> Even to eat. 
And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. They hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As they went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And then on to verse 30, uh, 53. When he had crossed over, they came to a land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began bringing the sick on mats and wherever they heard he was. And where, wherever he went, into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might be, even touch the, the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it would be healed. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you this day that we know that sometimes we just need rest. We need to go to that deserted place. We need to find that place of peace. And so today, Father, we just thank you and praise you for the leaders of the church who stepped forth to allow the rest of others. And so, Father, today we ask for your blessing to fall upon those who um, step up in ministry and those who recognize the compassion that they have for others and most of all provide a ministry to uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ to the hurting. So, Father, today we thank you and praise you. May you open up our hearts and our minds to reading and hearing of your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is uh, next week. Ann and I are going to be taking a Sunday off. And uh, David Myers is going to be filling the pulpit. So thank you to David. David and Trish have gone away this weekend. And uh, so they will be gone, but he will be uh, preaching. And uh, so thank you to David. And um, I think Ann and I just kind of, I don't know where we're going to go. We were going to go this weekend, but I just think we just going to go to some deserted place. I don't know where that is, but uh, I'm not making any plans or anything, but uh, the maybe where I would have gone was might get squashed a little bit because of the rain that they're calling for next weekend. So, but we'll see. We're just going to go and just kind of uh, find a place of rest. But I think the point that I got this that out of the reading today is that the disciples came to Jesus and when they came to him, they said they told of all the things that they had done. And what they had done is they, when Jesus sent them out two by two, we know that he gave them the power to heal. If you say that they're healed, then they are healed. And so when they came back and they came to Jesus, they were telling him of all the things that they did. They, they were just as amazed and joyous and all the things that they were able to do for others who were hurting. And so they came and do that. And Jesus told them, he said, you know, he said, get in the boat, and we're going to go away, and we're going to go to this deserted place, because I know that you've been so busy that you haven't even had the leisure of going to get something to eat. You've been sharing the ministry, in the ministry of Jesus Christ, and so we're going to go away, and you're going to do this. And, but what happened in this is I wonder what the disciples thought. Because as you read in the story, it says we're going to go away to this deserted place. You're going to have this time of rest. You're going to have time of peace. But as they, the boat was going along in the water, we also learned that there were people that recognized them. They looked out and they saw them out in the boat. They knew it was Jesus. They knew it was the, the, the disciples. They knew that they had been healing, you know, and they doing all these things. And they recognized them. And I wonder, how did they know where they were going? It said in there that they, they all recognized them and they headed off on foot. And they ran and they got ahead of them. And when Jesus and the disciples came ashore, they were already there. How did they know where they were going? What, they're not very good at picking a deserted place to go and find a place of rest. And so they get there, but you would think that Jesus would say, wait a minute. These disciples need some rest. They have done great things. They've been doing miracles. They've been healing. They've been doing all these things. Just leave them alone. But what happens is Jesus gets out of the boat and the scripture tells us he had compassion on them. It didn't tell us what the disciples did. In my mind, I'm picturing the disciples, they got their rest. They witnessed 
Jesus at work. They saw Jesus healing. They saw the compassion of Jesus for those who were broken, those who were, who were hurting, whether it be illness or whatever it may be. But Jesus, they witnessed the, the, the compassion of Jesus Christ. And Jesus went to the people and he began to care for them. He began to care for their needs. So what, I, what I'm thinking here is no matter what Ann and I decide to do, no matter what you guys do when you leave the church, when you're filled with the Word of God, no matter what you do, ministry never stops. No matter where you go, a week, a week or so ago, we had a guy come into the shop. He came in from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. He came to work on one of the pieces of equipment. The, the company sent him out there. Um, and, you know, I went over and introduced myself, and we got to talking. I said, anything you need, just let me know. We have this, this, and this. And we got to talking, and all of a sudden, through the conversation, I shared with him that I also pastor two churches. The floodgates opened with all the issues that was going on in his life. I could have just said, whoa, i got to get out of here. But you just have a sense of compassion for what he's going through. He's a Christian man. He's struggling with a, many different issues in, in his family. And just, he needed somebody to talk to. I don't think that we can turn our backs on these kind of needs in the community and in the world and outside of the church walls. What we're hearing in this passion is that we, in our ministry, in the community, need to have compassion on those who are hurting. If we know of somebody who is hurting, we need to help take our friends to where <coughs> Jesus is because Jesus will have compassion. See, ministry never stops. It's only when you keep it in, within yourself that them opportunities don't arise. See, God is using you. God will use you. God will open up doors for you to share in the ministry of Jesus Christ, to share the healing power that comes through God himself. But we have to open, be willing to open ourselves up. We have to be willing to share the word of God. I love the story of Kathy. I'll leave out all the this stuff, but Kathy said um, the young child goes to a Christian school and was taught by the teacher that you need to go out into the community, you need to, you know, tell of God, you need to continue to tell the stories, you need to do this. A little six-year-old boy, so he thought, you know, first thing I'm going to do is tell, tell my best friend. And then he told us, kind of spilled the stories about Jesus and all this kind of stuff, and his friend said, I don't think so. He kind of walked away, he's kind of heartbroken. Went back to his mom and told her, Mom, I tried to sell a story and he did my best friend and said, I don't think so. His best friend was Jewish. But you know what I see out of this story? He was willing to go and tell the story. There's nothing wrong with either side of that. Either side, they have their belief. There's nothing wrong. Today we're going to talk about differences coming together in the love of Jesus Christ, not focusing on that difference. We're going to talk about all that today, and that, that's part of what I hear in that story, is that these two young boys are still going to be best friends tomorrow, yet they don't necessarily agree. But I just hear them both now, out of one, you know, telling the stories of Jesus, and I hear the other boy telling the stories as he's been told. And there's nothing wrong with that, and I, these two boys are going to run and play and do all the things that they did yesterday. And I think that's a great lesson for all of us. And no matter what our differences are, let us go out into the world and in the community and run and play and enjoy each other. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you this day for the opportunity to, to kind of go away in a deserted place and be able to, to just kind of rest from all that's going on. But Father, today, this day, we need to look at ourselves and be open to the fact that there are people that you place in our life who need to hear the word of God. And we need to have the strength and the wisdom and the courage to do as that young six-year-old boy did. Tell the stories of Jesus. And maybe we will hear, I don't think so. But that's okay. At least you're telling the story. At least you're sharing in the ministry of Jesus Christ. But in that ministry, let us not forget that we all come together in one because of the love of Jesus Christ. No other reason than the love of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
Um, as we now come together in time of prayer, do you have any joys or concerns you share this morning? Pray. Uh, continue to pray for Talia, who's still. Talia? Continue prayers for Oak Grove and some of the things that are going there. Kathy and all the staff and uh, continue prayers for uh, all the health care facilities. Carol with Carol Neal. Yeah, Carol. Continue prayers for Carol and Randy. Um, also, uh, Chuck had a pretty rough week this past week as well, so continue prayers for Betty and Chuck and uh, Prayers for our nation, elected officials, law enforcement, first responders, our forces, health care workers, caregivers, all those affected by COVID, all churches, and all God's children. Um, continue prayers for Matt and Julie um, Staubaum as they prepare for their next step in their, their journey together. Um, also, a friend of mine, um, it's through a business acquaintance, but... Um, prayers for his family. His name is George, and I don't know the family that well. I've met a couple of them, but um, George passed away um, this month on the 16th, and been very devastating for. I just heard about him yesterday, but been quite a shock for the family and everybody that knew him. So um, please, please pray for George's family. Yes, pray. Uh, Betty just sent in said good morning and prayers for Chuck. And my family, uh, Joy, Chuck's brother, came, and they hadn't seen each other in 53 years. Oh, wow, that is a joy. Yes, Betty, I saw your hand go up. Um, I got a friend named Nancy, and uh, uh, she fell down on her deck, and uh, she's not been able to walk for, I think, three weeks. Uh -huh. And now she's sort of, where she can hobble around some, and she's a diabetic, so... She also takes a blood thinner, so just when she hurt her eye, it just turned really, really black. Oh. And um, she really needs her prayers. Pray to God, reach down and, and touch that lady and heal her so she can be able to get up to things she likes to do. All right. Thank you. Um, Betty asked for prayers for Nancy, who fell on her deck and is you know, black and blue and having trouble getting around. So prayers for healing for her. Linda? Um, prayers for all of the families who have a loved one in hospice, mm -hmm. um, as well as the people in hospice. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's pretty heart-wrenching yeah. um, what they go through. Yeah. Uh, prayers, Linda's prayer was for those who were in hospice, but also the families of those. And I'm going to add those hospice caregivers, uh, prayers for them as well. It is a very difficult situation for all. Joyce? Owen and Caleb. Owen and Caleb. Janet? Mary and Carl. Mary and Carl. Continue prayers for them. Charlotte and Naomi. Charlotte and Naomi. Let's pray. Father God is... What a joy it is to be here in the presence of God. Father, we are in the dwelling place of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, as we come before you, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to hear um, your scriptures, your message, and sing your songs. And, um, Father, today, as we stand in your presence, we have lifted up the names that are upon our hearts. We have listed, lifted up many to you, and we continue to lift them up, much as the the scripture that we just read that in some cases that we just pray that, that your hand will be laid upon their shoulder and let them feel the very presence of God and may that a healing touch come to them in whatever fashion that may be maybe a physical healing like from a fall maybe a, um, maybe a psychological um, healing from the, the stress of other things that are going on maybe it's a, a healing of having the right words and and, and, and in a certain situation in helping somebody in hospice care. Father, all those things are just something that, that sometimes we just find ourselves in the middle of and, and we're not fully prepared. 
but today we just want to, to allow you and call upon you to, to be a part of us in, in each one of those situations because we know our ministry, you know, it goes much farther, much deeper than just these four walls. And so, Father, today we ask that you help us to be able to be what people need in the, in, in the body of Christ in that struggle that they go through. And so today we come to you in a joyous um, uh, occasion in being able to uh, worship and be in fellowship with each other. But also, Father, we know there is a great need of, and uh, hurt within our, our uh, community and our family. And so, Father, today we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to, to be in the house of the Lord and to lift up in one voice the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our uh, scripture lesson for today comes from <laughs> Ephesians, and uh, I will be reading from. I will be reading from the second chapter of uh, Ephesians in verses eleven to twenty-two, and uh, the title of this part of uh, this part of the passage is that of a. Uh, um, uh, Christ, one in Christ. We're all called together one in Christ. And that means all of our differences, all we are, those who have accepted Christ, those who come into the body of Christ, are all one in Christ Jesus. And so that's what it's entitled. But I think there's something just, something that we need to look for is that the peace that comes to us, the peace that comes in Jesus Christ, the peace that is offered for all of us, not just me, not just you, not just those in the church, but that peace is for all of us, and that's what we're going to hear um, in the book of Ephesians today. Let us hear from the word of the Lord. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made by in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at, at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, who you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making a, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the, that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are near, for through him both of us have access to the one spirit, and um, one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation and of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place of God. Let's pray. Father, there is no more division in the church, in the body of Christ, and those who profess Jesus Christ as Savior. There is no more dividing wall. There is no more division. We are all called together one in Christ Jesus. Father, help us 
to hear the word of God for us this morning. Help us to go out into the community and into the world and continue our ministry in bringing all together in that same love that Jesus offered to us. Father, let us see through the eyes of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask you a question. What do you think of when I say the dwelling place of God? What do you think about? And you think about maybe you think about the church, maybe you think about yourself. But what do you think when you think about the dwelling place of God? And so, kind of when we invited Christ into our hearts, when we invited Christ into our life, then that became a dwelling place for God. And so we think that we, well, we know, I believe we know. It's not, I think that God is here with us. When we come into worship, I believe that God is here with us. This is the dwelling place of God. The church is the dwelling place of God. And so we also believe that when we invite Jesus into our heart, that that becomes the dwelling place of God. That is our relationship with with Jesus Christ. We accept Jesus as our Savior. He lives within us. He lives within our hearts. He is with us no matter where we go. So being in the presence of God, the dwelling place of God, when we tend to think about that, it's not just coming into the church that we are in the dwelling place of God because we have invited him into our hearts. So whether we are at home, whether we go off to some deserted place for some much needed rest, wherever we go, we are in the dwelling place of God. And I believe that we have to do that. So we, what we need to do is we need to look at others, whether it be in the church or out of the church, we need to look at others and say that those who are in Christ as well, no matter what the differences may be, that, no, that, that they being in Christ, that we have all been called together in one, as one, in the body of Christ. And that doesn't matter what our differences are. And it doesn't matter what we do. I think what we've done is like when our passage said today, this, this dividing wall they talked about, that, that we have built a dividing wall within the church. We have built it um, maybe between the pews, maybe in front of the church, wherever it is. And when I say the church, I'm not, I have to say this all the time, I'm not talking about this particular church. I'm talking about the universal church, the church of the world, the, Everywhere We have this dividing line. And if we look at our passage today, where it talks about um, the circumcised and the uncircumcised, the, there are those who would say, in those times, they would say that they are justified in what they believe. The scripture said on the eighth day, you would go and be circumcised in, into, the, into the body. That's, that's part of what the Bible tells us. And so now we have this circumcised and uncircumcised. And, and the, this passage says that the, those who are the uncircumcised, those who are the circumcised. We have this wall built between them. That's part of the church at that particular time. And so when Jesus came into this, he said, it said in our passage, you know, through Paul, he says, I have come to abolish the law, even though we know that Jesus did not come to totally abolish the law, he came to fulfill it. In our passage, I was, you know, that I just read, maybe you didn't, did or didn't hear, but he said, he has abolished the law of its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So what he's talking about is this division, this wall that is being built, this, the, and, and we'll label the wall as that of hostility. And so when I sit there and look at this dividing wall, this wall of hostility is this hatred that's building on, on both sides of the wall. Now we're, today, Ann and I are celebrating our 29th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary to us, who would have ever thought, but... The relationship in, is, is, marriage is tough. And if you've been married, you, you have to agree to this. Marriage is tough. You have some tough ways. I always describe my marriage as that's why I drive a four-wheel drive truck. Because when marriage gets tough, I'm going to put it in four-wheel drive and I'm going to make it over those humps. And when it starts to smooth out again, usually a day or two, you know, I can put it back into two-wheel drive and save gas. But it's worth the gas to make it through there. You have to fight to make it work. What you have to do is 
in, and sometimes in marriage, you build this dividing wall because of, of the difference that you, differences that you have. See, when Ann and I first met, I came from a, a, a relationship, a broken relationship. I was divorced many years ago, and it was, it was, I was in a different place than she was. She had never been married. And so when we came together, she'll tell you, and I love telling the story because, you know, I don't think it means that way. But she says, she says, I fell in love with your eyes. I don't know why they got bangs on her. Maybe not 29 years ago. Well, it would actually be 31 years ago we met. But it, 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 she just says it. But when I came there, I was like, woo, you know, this is a little too fast for me. You know, I, I, I've been here, done this, and, you know, I got to... I got to tread water a little slower than maybe what she was, but she didn't express this. It didn't. I didn't feel overwhelmed or anything. But we were in two different places. But eventually, over time, we kind of came together. We fell in love, and I kind of caught up to her. We'll just say. And so it it just came to a place where we fell in love. But what happens in when you fall in love and, and you start hitting all these rocky roads? That sometimes I believe that what you do is you build a wall because of your differences. See, there was a lot of differences. We came from two different places. There was a lot of differences. But we came together and we embraced those because we fell in love. And out of the love, we enjoyed each other, even though we were different. But over time, as you spend time and you kind of get, really, you got to pick on me for that? You know, that's my difference. Get over it, you know, kind of thing. And so you build this wall, but what happens when you build this wall is that love ends up on one side and hostility and anger, resentment and all that ends up on the other side. And so what you do is that, that eventually that love begins to diminish and the anger and hatred and resentment continues to grow. And if you don't deal with that dividing wall, and knock it down by the love that brought you together, then it begins to separate you. And sometimes I think that the younger couples don't want to go through that. It's not worth the fight anymore. When I do marriage counseling, one of the things that I do in uh, counseling is I take the top 10 reasons for divorce and use that through the counseling. And one of the reasons I use that is because I try and help to recognize the pitfalls and the obstacles that are going to come in your marriage. And I think that's very important because what it prepares them for is dealing with that instead of building that dividing wall and eventually breaking, you know, ending up in divorce. And so I think that's very important. Some people think that, well, that's kind of harsh to start right there. But I think it's important it's in, it's in, to kind of recognize those pitfalls when they begin to happen. So in that being said, there are times in your, life, in your marriage that things are really difficult. And the analogy I'm going to give you today is this, is that sometimes you can be, and because the guy is standing up here doing all the talking, yeah, it'll be kind of leaning towards the guy's point of view. So just, that's my point. Sometimes in marriage, it's like putting the belly of a lioness, and then all of a sudden she remembers it's feeding time, and she rips off your arm. That's how marriage is sometimes. I told you, it's going to be a guy's point of view. But when that happens, that sometimes you build a dividing wall. What I used to be able to do with two arms, I can no longer do, because you took one. And resentment builds up. Anger builds up. And all of a sudden that dividing wall comes on. You forget why you fell in love with each other. You forget the fact that you looked beyond the differences that you had in the beginning. And you can't do that. We have to find a way to talk and to work and to laugh about those things. I was talking to a couple of Teff last week and we were downstairs and, and Roy and Bonnie Reese and Roy said something about Bonnie and she just broke out in laughter. And, and she, I said, that's what's missing. We don't laugh anymore. And so in a sermon pretty soon, it's going to be about something Ann and I just cracked up on the way to church this morning. And, and she makes fun of me all the time, squirrel. And just a hint of what's to come. And But I told her, you got no business talking about squirrel. Because you just, I, and I'm not giving it away to you. It's, it's just far too good not to use it. 
And she said, I've never been, a, you know, looked at it that way. I said, you have now. So, <laughs> so I'm feeding you so you come back every Sunday just to, so you don't miss that. So, but anyway, it, it's just something that we have to remember that love. And I think what's happening in the church is that we've taken that same point of view. When, di when marriage gets difficult, we don't talk. When things in the church get difficult, we don't talk. And we begin to lay the bricks for this dividing wall, this bricks for a hostility, as our scripture says today. Instead of finding that we are all brought together in the same body of Christ, we are all brought together because we love Jesus Christ. The reason why we are here is because of our belief in Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus Christ, the God who, who crucified his son so that we could be forgiven of our sin. All these things came together. That's why we exist. And yet, we miss the point of today's scripture where it says that we all came together in that reason, in Christ's love, and tear down that division, that wall of hostility, and worship together. Why can't we worship together because of the one that came and provided the love for us, the very reason we are here? What we should be doing is not looking at why we, uh, why I disagree with somebody else, why I should build that wall, why I should no longer speak to you or hang out with you or do those things. Why? What we should be doing, looking at is that looking through the eyes of Christ and saying that I love Christ, you love Christ, and we are here to worship Christ. We are here to praise the God that forgave us. We are here to praise the God that saved us. So let's build a wall of love instead of a wall of, just, of hostility and division and hatred. And I think what happens then, what we really need to do is look through the eyes of Christ Jesus. Go through all the Bible. There's many different stories and everything, the stories of Jesus were the, the, the disciples witnessed in the things he did. Jesus never corrected anybody who was sinning. He never corrected them in a hostile way. He corrected them in love. He corrected them because he loved them. And he looked at them as, as someone that was worthy of his going to the cross. I think what our direction needs to be in the church is looking at each other as someone worthy of Christ going to the cross. Our focus must be that of looking through the eyes of Christ. See, when you look at what's going on, the, the circumcised, the uncircumcised, they had a reason for why they didn't get along, they didn't associate. They looked at the, the, the Old Testament laws, and they looked at it and they said, the Bible says this, so we just cannot hang around. We cannot do these things together. We cannot be a part of each other. Yeah, you can sit in the back of the church. Yeah, you can. Think about this for a moment. And they, they, they were able to worship. They were able to worship God. You have the Gentiles. That's the uncircumcised. They were able to worship. They sat outside in the temple courts and listened to the sermons and what's going on. Listened to the reading of the scripture. They were there to worship, but they weren't allowed in the synagogue. This is where we have to grow in this love of Jesus Christ that came to us, is that we worship together. We sit in the same pews. We sit, sit in the same meal. We sit at the same restaurants. We do all the same things because we love God. We embrace the differences that we have. We embrace the fact that I can reach someone. One of the, when I went into ministry, I, I talked to my mentor, and I asked him, I said, how can I go into ministry? I'm a divorced man. How can I go and talk to somebody and lead them in, a, in marriage counseling when I'm a divorced man? He said, you know things, you've experienced things that I've never experienced. I think that's what we need to do. You know things, you've experienced things, you, you can share things that other people can't. But we have to embrace the fact that we have all been brought together for that one reason. And that reason is... Jesus Christ. The young boy that I was sharing this story about, he couldn't wait to share the story. He couldn't wait to share with his best friend. Where better to start? But he wasn't discouraged. He was hurt. 
He didn't build a wall between him and his best friend. They still played together and probably got trucks out and played in the mud and belly ball, whatever they do together. That's what we need to do. We need to embrace each other. We need to play ball. We need to get out the trucks. We need to put it in four-wheel drive, make it through the rough times, do whatever we got to do. But we need to know that we came together for one reason, and that one reason is Jesus Christ. You're a follower of Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. Christ has called us all into ministry with him. When we go out into the community, we need to profess that faith like that young boy, that six-year-old boy. We need to say where we stand because there's someone who is hurting that needs to hear what you've experienced. Don't let it go to waste. Bad experiences are good learning lessons. Not just for you, but for others that God has placed in your path. You have a ministry. I have a ministry. And whether we go off to some deserted place with Jesus to try and find some rest because we haven't even had time to eat, the message for you and I is this. Peace is not just for you. Peace is not just for me. Peace is for all of us. And you can take that message and you can help bring peace to someone else who is going through a very difficult time. Let's pray. Father God, you have called us. Last week we heard you chose us, you called us, you loved us. We are of the family. Let us be a part of that family. Embrace the part of that family that says we all love Jesus together. Father, I know that there are people that come to church that don't haven't yet called upon the name of Christ Jesus. But yet there is a, a, an unknowing, a, a calling to, to learn more. Maybe to back their disbelief. Maybe to back their belief. Maybe they're hurting and they just want to touch the the fringe or the cloak of Jesus, whatever that may be, we are that that you, that vessel, that tool that God will use. And each one of us have experienced different uh, experiences. And each one of us can take that experience and that learning lesson and help someone else through a very difficult time. But not if we have built a dividing wall that we can never get across. You have broken down that division by the love of Jesus Christ. You have fulfilled the law by bringing love and humanity back together. Father, we pray that this day, that as we go out into the world, as we go out into the community, as we see people with pink hair and no hair, or whatever it may be, maybe the pants almost to their ankles, I don't know. Whatever that may be, there are differences in the world. Let us see past the differences and say, have you ever met my friend Jesus? Have I got a story to tell? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all join together in our closing hymn, which is 377, It Is Well With My Soul. <laughs>
talking with uh, Betty and Paul. Betty, what was the phrase after you go through the different centuries? What did it end with each century? What did you tell me? I forgot. Um, it is better or something? Yeah, it can't get no better than can't this. Can't get no better than this. Betty and Paul went to Florida and they said, they said there was this room that you go into and you kind of watch a thing and, the, and the, you're take, you, you kind of turn and you go from one century to the next century. And then at the end of the one century, like when they finally, you know, got, a, say, a washing machine or something, you know, it, it would end with, you, it can't get any better than this. And then you'd go to the next one and you had a ringer washer and it can't get any better than this. Then you'd go to the next one. And so I was just kind of thinking about what you said. And I was thinking about the, the scripture where we talked about the, the disciples and how they went to Jesus and were kind of bragging and talking about the things they did. Oh, we were filled with joy. And how, in my mind, I'm sitting there thinking how the disciples are telling Jesus, it can't get any better than this. And then you go to the next century, and maybe the disciples that continued to the ministry of Jesus Christ and say, it can't get any better than this. I wonder what it would be like for us today, if it, at the end of our life, at the end of our century or whatever, if we were to say, it can't get any better than this, and then our children and other children just continue to share, the six-year-old boy continues to share about the stories of Jesus and he says, I can't get any better than this. That's how our ministry should be. That's how we should be out in the world, is that just providing every part, everything that we have, the, the stories of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the things that he does, in, and just have that feeling, it can't get any better than this. And, and, and it just continues to grow and, and continues to do that. And so in that song that we just sang, my question for all of us is this. Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? Um. Church today, just like Jackson. Yeah!